Greetings and various assorted salutations. Welcome aboard the Errant Dawn, and this is going to be another one of my pedagogy rants. Uh, before you ask, I've decided to switch my pedagogy rant series into um, Genesis Alpha 1, a video game I like playing, a space colonizer. If you're curious about the ship that I'm in, um, I actually am, have a tour video that I'll be releasing soon. Uh, but the intent of the pedagogy rants is I need, as I talk about kind of uh, different academic things, uh, the setup of my courses, any difficulties that I encounter, things New like that. Have been refined. Um, however, since that's kind of boring to talk about, um, I like to play video games while I talk about it. So, kind of the idea of this is uh, today's episode, I'm going to be looking at. Um, the fall 2020 semester and how that went. Um, let's see here. Let's, before we go on to that, I need to find some destinations. Oh well. <clears throat> so, anyways, to talk about fall 2020, um, which is now past, it is now, we are now a little bit into spring 2021. I'm thinking my next episode will look at spring 2021. Um, but uh, essentially what we're going to look at today is what worked with fall 2020 and what didn't work. Uh, I taught, by the way, uh, U.S. History, New materials have um, been I taught U.S. History 2 and U.S. History 3 in this semester. I had never taught U.S. History 3 before. Well, I taught a, a little bit Warning. during my um, spring semester of student teaching. Uh, but I hadn't actually taught it as a fully trained teacher with all the resources available uh, until this semester. Of course, I land in the most dangerous sector in space. Uh, well, we'll do some work. But, anyways. <clears throat> so, U.S. History 2 covers um, Western expansion all the way through the Great Depression and the New Deal. Uh, that's the class I've taught the most. It's the one I'm most familiar with. Um, the U.S. History 3 is modern America. It's World War II up until New yesterday, or the pre-COVID era, as I, we sometimes joke in the biz. Um, but, no... I really liked teaching U.S. History 3 because it's got a lot of fun stuff. I like the modern history stuff. That's what I studied a lot in college, though I never really studied American uh, history per se. I mainly focused on European and Asian history, uh, Japan and China. But anyways, I'm getting a bit off track, partially because I'm learning that multitasking is not as easy as people make it out to be. Yeah, I knew that. Um, but let's see here. Job assigned. Hmm. Job assigned. Job assigned. Need one more crew member. Uh, Job Baker. assigned. Okay. Anyways, where was I? Sorry. Um, let's see here. I'm just looking at my outline of things. So to talk about first what worked in fall 2020, uh, if you've watched my earlier series on these matters, um, you kind of already know... You kind of already know the basics of things. Uh, what I what I was planning to do, what I tried to do, and so um, be thinking of those uh, when I'm talking about some of the stuff I'm referring to here. Um, but no. Oh, but to start, the biggest success I think I had was in doing standard instructions. Standardizing instructions went remarkably Job well. Um, where basically what I was doing is 
writing out how I wanted to do things, how things needed to be done, um, and going from there. Job uh, because so I had standard instructions on how to turn in assignments, how to carry out assignments, um, how to uh, fix common technical problems. Of course, the problem with those technical problems is we first had to find them at first and so unfortunately a lot of the technical issues like I had this one problem with YouTube videos not playing correctly uh, we didn't figure that out until practically the end of the semester um, but once we did it's a problem that pretty much fixes itself but um, so that writing out standard instructions and using them over and over and then teaching students how to follow those instructions and then I also provided videos for instructions too. Um, those were kind of a work in progress, and I'll admit I don't have a full set of, of video instructions for everything uh, because I don't know some of the things I never really had to explain a whole lot to students once I wrote them out. And there's a lot of cases where the students figured out what they needed to do right away without any major issue. Um, but. Uh, in case you're wondering, right now I'm storming an abandoned sh ship. I might, I might get very distracted in a second. Eh. Anyways, um, where was I? So standard instructions is probably one of the greatest successes I ever had. Um, another big success I had was in developing plans for different levels of coke. Um, these, this planning, the essentially what I did is the school district could operate at different plans uh, where depending on how many people are out. So we had level one, level two, and level three. Um, Level two, which is how we started the semester, is the most complicated one. Essentially, half of the students are in the building at any given time, and then the other half are learning remote. Um, this system was... This system was um, problematic to start the semester with because it's complicated. Um, uh, because students were coming in, they'd never really been in the COVID world. They'd never really been in the schools before. Ooh. That's not good. Um, and so when, when level two started, we had a lot of students who weren't sure where they needed to be or what they needed to do. And so there's a very... There's a turret in here somewhere. There it is. Ow. Strafe it. Ow. Where was I? There's a treasure in here, I can sense it. Um, so, the big problem that was with the level two is there's all this coordination game that just was not going well for a lot of people. Uh, we eventually moved out of level two and we've been told up and down that we will never do level two again. Accessing archives. Um, I think level two worked though, because the goal of level two was to decrease the number of people in the building. Um, and the way I built my course is it didn't particularly matter. Um, it didn't particularly matter whether you're remote or not, because I developed everything to run on the computer system. And if you were in class, you worked on it in class. If you were out of class, you worked on it uh, through that. The main weakness of that um, was that... 
the main weakness of that, of course, was that a lot of a lot of um, students with poor internet access did not really benefit from access. this setup. Abort. Still filled it up. But been there. So a lot of students kind of found that the transition between levels chaotic. Once we got going in my class, uh, we didn't have as many issues, fortunately, uh, because the way my class was designed, it was just not as, um, the levels didn't really matter quite as much. Accessing. Um, let's see here. But anyways, level one is where we spent most of our time in the semester. Level one is where we had all the students in the building, uh, but we've regularly had students out due to quarantine Morning. protocols and um, whatnot. We went to level three very briefly. Uh, in case you're wondering, level three is where all students and staff were operating remote. Uh, we did that for a little bit. Um, because uh, we simply ran out of key personnel in certain areas, and so things got very dire, and we were forced to go to that this level. Looks like I've already cleaned this out. Ooh. Okay, so... But... Current. Ow, 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 ow. Well, that wasn't good. I hit where there's a turn. Does this gun actually work? Ow. Pull back. So, level three didn't happen very long. Um, uh, when it did, it was quite damaging for something. Ooh, we got something. Cleaning this place out. What is this? Access granted. Right, I keep getting distracted. This wasn't a good idea. Oh well, we're gonna roll with it anyways. Um, so it didn't really matter what level we were at um, when I set up my course. If we were at level two, level one, it just didn't matter. The way I configured my course, I operated on the assumption that um, when the the our goal our goal is to cover content in my course. My goal is to cover content in my course, and so I just could not be as concerned with like making the time of day or where we were important. And so I kind of tried to set things up so that um, it just didn't matter. But, and that was a real strength because it meant my course when we switch levels, well, level switching was almost always kind of abrupt. Um, it didn't impact the students too much. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna go for the bridge. Let's see here. Can I f 
find the bridge. Um, so, that was one of the perks, was the level change plan. Just It just didn't matter. Seems kind of spooky. Access granted. Warning. System malfunction. Access granted. Okay, here we are. Here's the bridge. Access granted. I think we've cleared the ship off. Alrighty, I think it's about time we start talking about the challenges of the semester. Um, the first and biggest challenge, I think, um, was... Uh, the biggest challenge, I think, was maybe getting everything operational at first, was figuring out, okay, how can I do things in a way that will ensure that they work no matter what? There's that logistical challenge of planning how do you plan for the unexpected when you're not entirely sure what you're going to do? Um, I handled it most of the time through careful use of um, keeping my plans as simple as possible and depending as, on as simple a technology as possible. I mean, to be brutally honest, some of the software I use, like um, uh, outside of Canvas, I mainly used a lot of PDFs, um, Google Docs. Some students relied on Microsoft Office uh, for, for things. Um, videos, we just kept it as simple as possible uh, because I wasn't sure, I wasn't always sure necessarily what, could, what technology we had could do and I couldn't always guarantee that um, all the technology worked correctly. Um, so that was one of the big challenges, is how do you plan for anything and everything when you're not sure what all you're going into? And I found the way to do that is keep your plan simple, um, make sure that the stuff you're using um, works consistently as much as possible, and get student feedback on common problems. So like my suggestion box helped a lot with that. Um, one of the other challenges I ran into, and this was one that I just never quite, we never quite fully addressed with everyone, and that was the quarantines. The exact quarantine protocol actually isn't too terribly important. The challenge was, um, the challenge of it was kind of, how do you get people caught up if they've been out for like 10 or 12 days, 10, 10 to 14 days? How do you get them caught up? Um, and some students, it took all semester to catch up, and some students never quite caught up. Uh, and so that was probably one of the biggest challenges. And it was one of the things I didn't really plan for, because I wasn't sure how it was going to work. And I had so many other things to plan. I just did not um, have the chance yeah, to fine. figure it out. No, so quarantines were a challenge I never quite figured out in fall 2020. A lot of it depended on student initiative, and that was a real challenge because they already had a lot to deal with. Um, but one of the other things I ran into was um, morale and perception of technology. Uh, one of the big challenges I think I ran into, and this was a big problem with uh, with a number of students was there's this sense that the computer stuff didn't feel real or it felt too abstract for them and a number of students I know struggled with that. Um, I've read somewhere a while back that um, computerized testing for example gets lower scores and part of the reason for that is there's the lack of a tactile sense. Um, 
not. Yes, I do notice the irony of typing virtually on my computer, playing a computer game, talking about computers feeling abstract. Um, I see the irony. But anyways, um, it's kind of a real struggle because a lot of students weren't used to using computers and contrary to popular belief, young people are not innately good with computers or comfortable with them. Um, oh good, we have a promotion. But So that was kind of one of the problems we ran into is getting students to realize this semester I don't know how to say it, is real, the stuff you do this semester counts and has meaning. Um, that's kind of what I was, that's kind of the struggle we were dealing with. A lot of students caught on though, and a lot of students did really well last semester. I saw some great success stories. Um, so I saw some really great success stories last semester with some students who they really bought into the technology, but not everyone was not everyone was doing it. Not everyone liked it. Um, speaking of the technology, also working remote is still a scatter shot, because just because we gave students computers, just because we brought more computers in, doesn't mean we've actually fixed a lot of outstanding problems in education. And we can guarantee internet access at school, but outside of the schoolhouse, that's not as guaranteed. I mean, not everyone has an internet that internet connection for gaming rigs, and that includes teachers even. So that was another complication that I feel exists in the system. But um, another thing that kind of ran ran into is I had my own familiarity challenges with the technology. Uh, and that was because um, I I understand how all this stuff works in theory. I just don't have any experience using it on such a large scale with 100 plus students. Um, I'd never done that before. And so there's a learning curve to figure out how things work. Uh, and making... So I had to modify a lot of procedures that were like, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is easy. Um, there's there's no problem doing any of this stuff, and it was actually like, no, this process is great if you only have to do it like two or three times, but if you have to do it for like an entire three three to five sections of students, like adding up to a hundred plus, um, it's not a streamlined process, and so that was one of the challenges I came into was just trying to reach the point where I could um, comfortably use the technology myself to accomplish the goals that I needed to accomplish. Um, so familiarity with technology was a two-way two street. Um, let's see, we're gonna go here. But no, so familiarity with tech was another problem we ran into. Um, already I'm starting to see some of these problems disappear in spring 2021, but I'll talk about that in a separate video. Um, I think I'm going to wrap things up, which incidentally um, is right when I'm about to do something interesting. Um, but in my next video I'll talk about spring 2021 planning and adjustments I made uh, between the two semesters. So. Um, until later, I guess.